One of the big problems with achalasia is because of its rarity, there isn't a huge amount of awareness out there in the general population, of course. When you're talking about an incidence of one or two per hundred thousand, an average GP might not see a patient with achalasia for a couple of years. In my practice, one study we looked at, we were looking at a median of seven years for duration of symptoms, from the onset of symptoms to where they finally came to a specialist clinic. A number of conditions, apart from achalasia, may cause swallowing problems. Your GP may refer you to a gastroenterologist, a doctor specialising in the digestive system. There are four key tests they may use to diagnose achalasia. Endoscopy, barium swallow, manometry, and 24-hour pH acid monitoring. For all of these tests, you will receive a letter explaining what will happen and how to prepare for the test. It's important you follow this advice to get the best results. If you are unsure or have any questions, talk to your doctor. Endoscopy uses a miniature camera on a flexible tube to enable the doctor to see the inside of your esophagus and the stomach. You lie on your side and the tube is passed through the mouth and down the throat. During the endoscopy, the doctor may take a biopsy, tiny samples of your esophagus for testing. An endoscopy is important to establish whether there is a physical obstruction causing the swallowing problems. An endoscopy may show evidence of achalasia, a dilated or baggy esophagus, a tight lower esophageal sphincter, or food and fluid unable to get into the stomach. It can also show esophagitis, inflammation and irritation of the esophagus. This test is essential because it can be used to rule out other diseases that can cause difficulty in swallowing. You'll be told how to get ready for the test, which will usually happen in hospital. You will usually be sedated. You will rest afterwards until you feel strong enough to go home. You will need someone to help you get home and be asked to take it easy for the rest of the day. I had a camera and light put down right down through into a duodenum. They could tell that there was a tightness in the lower esophageal sphincter. A barium swallow test shows what happens when you swallow. You'll be asked to drink a white liquid that shows up on x-rays. When the liquid has been swallowed, x-rays are taken at regular intervals to track the progress of the liquid. You will usually be standing up for this test. This test often shows the classic bird beak shape of the esophagus of someone with achalasia. This is where the esophagus is baggy, stretched by food that takes longer than it should to move down, and a lower esophageal sphincter which is tight and doesn't relax to allow liquid and food to pass into the stomach. In addition to liquid, you may be asked to eat other foods. You can tell your x-ray technician and doctor if you have any dietary requirements. This test takes place in hospital. The liquid can taste chalky but is not unpleasant. The test can be completed in about an hour and you can continue with your day. I had a barium x-ray which identified that the food had swallowed. It was like it was in a, sitting in a wine glass, the white uh, food. So it was sitting there and you could see there was a blockage and it wasn't going through. In a high resolution manometry test, you will be asked to sit up on a couch or bed. A very thin, flexible tube is passed up your nose and down the esophagus and, if possible, through the lower esophageal sphincter. This tube measures pressure while you're resting and during swallowing. When the tube is in place, you will be asked to drink water and possibly eat a small piece of bread. Some people find this test uncomfortable, but the results provide important information about how the muscles are operating and where the problems are occurring. This test is completed in hospital and takes around an hour. As you need to be able to swallow, you will not be sedated, which means after the test you can leave and continue with your day. Some medical establishments identify different types of achalasia, and manometry can help identify this. Type 1, or classical achalasia, means there is no peristalsis, the muscles do not tighten and relax, and the lower esophageal sphincter does not relax and open. Type 2, or compression achalasia, the muscles do not tighten and relax properly, or in the correct order. There is not smooth peristalsis. The lower esophageal sphincter does not relax and open. Type 3, or vigorous achalasia, there are uncoordinated, vigorous contractions. There is often high pressure in the esophagus caused by the muscles tightening and often causing chest pain. The lower esophageal sphincter does not relax and open. 
It may not be possible to determine exactly which type of achalasia you have. And it may be that the three types of achalasia actually represent three different stages of the same condition. Then I had a manometry test and that proved that there was no peristalsis taking place. The manometry test um, was a little uncomfortable to have the tube in my throat, but it was really fundamental to me because it was the most important bit of the jigsaw that actually gave a clear picture of what my situation is. I also got a manometry as well. It's not the most pleasant of tests, but it, it's okay and you have to have the tube down your nose and eat and drink whilst you've got the tube down your nose. So they measure what the response of your esophagus is to that. A 24-hour pH monitoring is used to test for acid reflux in the esophagus. This test will involve two hospital visits. The first visit is usually the same as the attendance for the manometry. After the manometry is completed, a very thin tube is passed up the nose and down through the esophagus. This is attached to a monitoring device that you wear on a belt around the waist. Once the tube has been securely fitted, you return home and continue with your daily activities, keeping a diary of what you eat and drink and any symptoms. During this time, the device will be recording the levels of acid which your lower esophagus is exposed to. 24 hours later, you return to have the tube removed and the information about the acid levels will be available to your doctor. The first hospital visit takes around an hour and fitting the tube can feel unpleasant. You will also be aware of it when it is in place. You can then return home and resume all normal activities and a normal diet. The following day, you will return to hospital to have the tube removed, which is a very quick process. This test is done off medication, which is usually stopped a week before. Now that sounds horrific. I really thought I'm not going to be able to sleep in this. You know, it's going to be dreadful. It was a doddle actually. I managed to sleep the whole night, so it really wasn't that uncomfortable. I had all the wires taped to my face, so you look rather odd. But what I thought sounded very, very scary was quite a simple procedure really and was quite an asset to, to discovering what was going on inside.